Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials video 130. It's on kinetic theory and temperature. Temperature is a macroscopic value. In other words, if I look to the left, I've got some water with a thermometer in it. We could say the temperature is around 20 degrees Celsius. As I add some warm water to it, what's happening to the temperature? It's increasing. It's a higher value, and now it's around 35 degrees Celsius. But that's macroscopic. It's what we're measuring in the world that we live in. But hopefully you know that temperature is caused by microscopic interactions. So we have all these molecules that are bouncing around, and so some have slow velocities, some have fast velocities, but the average kinetic energy of all those molecules is equal to the temperature. The more they're moving, the more their velocities are, the greater the temperature is. And so wouldn't it be wonderful if we had an equation that allowed us to move from the microscopic to the macroscopic world? Well, temperature has to be on the left, kinetic energy has to be on the right. This bar on the top means that it's the average. So we could put in our formula for kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. Now this velocity is the average velocity of the molecules. We call that the root mean squared. And then on the left side, we have to put in a constant. So that's the Boltzmann's constant. So three halves, Boltzmann's constant times temperature, this has to be measured in Kelvin, is equal to one half mv squared. And so this allows us to move from the microscopic world to the macroscopic world. Because temperature is the average kinetic energy of all of the molecules. And lots of times you'll represent that using a distribution where we put the speed on the bottom, and then the number of molecules on the left. So we get a nice distribution that looks like that. So if I were to say where is that average velocity, the tendency is to want to put the average right here, but it's actually going to be, since it goes to the right, it's going to be a little bit off center like that. So here's our formula again. What is this? This is going to be the root mean square, which is going to be the average velocity of all of those molecules. And so what we can do is if we know that value, know the temperature and Boltzmann constant, we can figure out the kinetic energy of even one molecule. And so temperature, remember, is going to be molecules bouncing around. On the left, I've got some cold water. On the right, I've got some warm or hot water. I put some dye in it so you can see the molecules interacting with the dye. I've done some time lapse here so you can see it moving around. So you can see on the right side, there's more molecular motion. More of those molecules are moving around, so we get greater distribution of the dye. And so we use a thermometer to measure how fast those molecules are going. So with the uh, Celsius scale, zero is going to be freezing, but what happens if we slow those molecules to a stop, that's going to be absolute zero, and we use the Kelvin scale to do that. And so remember, if you're ever converting a temperature to Kelvin, which you'll have to do with any of these problems, all you do is simply add 273 to it. So that'd be 288 Kelvin on the left, 338 Kelvin on the right. And so here's a way that we could apply that formula in the easiest sense. What's the average kinetic energy of a gas molecule at 25 degrees Celsius? What's neat is it doesn't matter what that gas molecule is. So we know kinetic energy is 3 halves kT. That's what we're asked for in this problem. I would look up the Boltzmann's constant. That's going to be 1.3a times 10 to the negative 23rd joules per Kelvin. And don't forget to convert 25 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So that'd be 298 Kelvin. And so we could figure out the kinetic energy of one gas molecule is going to be 6.2 times 10 to the negative 22nd joules. See how powerful that equation is? Allows us to go from just a temperature to this microscopic value, the amount of kinetic energy of a single gas molecule. So if we look at the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, we're going to have a bunch of gas moving around. They're each going to have different velocities, some high, some low. So we get a distribution that looks like that the largest value, most probable velocity, but to the right side of that, we're going to have what's called the root mean square velocity. That's going to be the average velocity of all the molecules that are moving around. So here's the root mean square. So how do we calculate that? Well, here's that formula again. If I want to solve for the velocity, so if I want to solve for just this value right here, my root mean square is equal to the root of 3kt divided by m. m is going to be the mass of the molecule itself. And so so this could be a quantitative problem that you would solve. Find the, the root mean square of a nitrogen molecule at zero degrees Celsius. So how would you solve this problem? Well, we know the Boltzmann, distribu we know the Boltzmann constant. We know the temperature since it's at zero degrees Celsius. We then have to find the mass of a nitrogen molecule. So you'd have to use a little bit of chemistry. And so we could use the periodic table to figure out the mass of a nitrogen molecule is equal to 4.65 times 10 to the negative 26. We plug 
plug all those values in here and then we'd find the root mean square of nitrogen. But in AP Physics they don't want you to solve it quantitatively. They want you to be able to read a distribution like this. So let me pose the same question. What's the root mean square of a nitrogen molecule at zero degrees Celsius? So reading this graph I'd see that nitrogen is going to be the red. You can see that nice distribution like this. We're reading velocities on the bottom and so if I were to approximate off to the right here I would say it's going to be around a little over 500 meters per second. And so you can read the distribution to figure it out. And so did you learn to qualitatively connect the microscopic to the macroscopic world? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.